Do you want to make your screams in your productions sound like this? Maybe, just maybe, it's time to But you're stuck with screams that sound like this. Stay tuned because I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that you could be missing out on. Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you some techniques that producers like Howard Benson and myself use day to day that you can use in your mixes to make your screams sound more powerful and aggressive. And if you keep watching to the very end, you're gonna learn one of my special ambience techniques. Screams differ greatly from one vocalist to another due to their vocal range and the screaming style. Whether it's a high fry style scream or a low guttural, you may need to make different EQ adjustments. And since the high fry screams are higher in the frequency spectrum, they can be harsh, masking other mix elements like guitars and cymbals. In contrast, low guttural screams require carving out frequencies in the low mids. And I was just thinking, have you ever wondered why scream vocalists make poor chefs? Because they always overdo the high fry. When recording, it's essential to record multiple takes of the same parts so that they can be layered together. For example, for your main scream track, you'll need to record two doubles at the same pitch. This gives you two tracks to support your main scream that can be panned left and right. And doing it like this is going to be essential for a technique that you don't want to miss later in the video. Now listen to these two clips. Can you hear a difference? If you did, then you're right. The first clip is a single main scream track, and the second clip is the same main scream supported by two double tracks, panned left and right. The vocal goes from being narrow and two-dimensional to wide and 3D. Now that we've got our layered screams, it's important that we align the double tracks to the main performance. This is to tighten them together, meaning all of the syllables play at the same time and all of the S's are the same length. Your vocals will sound loose and sloppy or even weak if the doubles aren't tight with the main track. Now we're going to boost the good frequencies and remove some of the bad ones. Start with a high pass filter, cutting out some sub frequencies in the 100 hertz to 150 hertz range to eliminate unwanted low end. Next, we're going to tackle those low mids around 200 to 500 hertz. That's where those unwanted boxy frequencies live. I like to use a wider cue cut for fixing this. High screams often carry harshness in the 3 kHz to 5 kHz area, so we'll sweep and cut these frequencies to smooth it out. You can do this with a static cut, a dynamic cut to only reduce the frequencies when the threshold is met, or use a smart tool such as Soothe. Lastly, we'll enhance clarity and detail with a boost in the 8K to 10K range. Try using a surgical EQ for cuts and analog style EQ for boosts. How could you leave me behind? I'm tired and I've felt it for some time. I can't take this much longer. I'm so gonna do it. How could you leave me behind? I'm tired and I've felt it for some time. I can't take this much longer. Now on each track, we want to remove as much dynamic range as possible to pin those vocals in front of the mix. Combining a limiter and a compressor works pretty well for this. The limiter can reduce the big peaks before they reach the compressor, giving it a reduced dynamic range to work with, and it won't overreact to the larger peaks. Use a fast attack with a medium release, and reduce the threshold until you're getting about 10 to 20 dB of gain reduction. This is important for bringing the screams to the front of the mix. Now try using an analog style compressor because they introduce harmonics and distortion when pushed to the limit. I like to apply a de to each vocal track to manage the sibilance and prevent it from overwhelming the mix, with 7 to 14k frequency range being a good starting point. Experimenting with the de placement in the signal chain either before or after compression can significantly alter and improve the vocal sound. Maybe 
I just may be take some to say it. Did you not hear me? Bob! Don't need your sympathy. I am above. Maybe, just maybe, take some to say it. Did you not hear me? Loud and clear. Don't need your tears. I don't need your Saturating screams is a quick and effective way to make them more aggressive. Try applying saturation to the vocal buzz to affect every vocal at once. This helps save time and make the effect more consistent for aggressive metal. Aim for an aggressive distortion rather than a subtle saturation, and carefully pick the type of distortion that you use. Remember to pick a distortion style that complements the type of screen. For example, higher screams might need a distortion with dark characteristics. If the distortion is too bright or driven too far, then the vocals could sound unpleasant and unnatural. Maybe, just maybe, take time to say it! Did you not hear me loud and clear? Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Maybe, just maybe, take time to say it! Did you not hear me? Remember all those layers we tracked earlier? Well, here's the technique where we're gonna need those. Take your doubles that are panned left and right and pitch them down. I like to start with three to five semitones, but you should always experiment with different numbers to see what works best for you. This effect sounds especially good on low screams. It adds a demonic quality that can sound really cool and makes your screams sound super heavy. You can take this even further by adding a vocal multiplier plugin to the layers, and now suddenly you have this thick wall of screams sounding absolutely brutal. Most screams are going to need some reverb and delay. Dry screams just sound pretty weird, especially with the density of modern metal mixes. Adding ambience to the vocals is just going to make it sound more epic and add more depth. The reverb and delay lengths vary depending on the song, tempo, and genre, but give these ideas a try and craft your own sound. Create two aux tracks receiving the signal from the screen bus. On the first track, at the beginning of the chain, insert an aggressive de-esser so that the high-end frequencies aren't going to be extended. Then add a compressor to compress the signal going into the reverb. This makes the reverb volume more consistent. Finally, add a reverb and play around with the different styles like plates, halls, rooms, and chambers. These are all great places to start, and don't forget to adjust the reverb time so that it matches the song. On the second aux track, we're going to add the delay. A slap delay works pretty well on most screams. It adds a sound similar to reflections of a close-by wall. Set the volume to where you can hear it too much, and then reduce it by a few dB so that it blends back into the mix. Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above! Don't need your tears, I don't need your love! Don't need your sympathy, I am above.
Getting the best results for screams in your mixes relies on creating your own sound using the techniques mentioned in this video. No presets can be loaded and expected to work in every session. Sure, you can make a template, but make sure you dial in each stage of the processing for the optimal effect. And after all, each vocalist has a different range, every mix is different, and every artist has a different vision. You need to take those into account. Follow and develop these simple steps to bring your vision to the artist every single time. And let me know in the comments which step you found most insightful. And that's all for this video. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Don't forget to check the links in the description below. Until next time, happy mixing.